make a decision. Should we come up and say, well, it don't make a difference what you believe? Well, it don't make a difference what you believe, it don't have to believe anything. If it doesn't make any difference what that music sounds like, then you can all blow the same horn. Right. Amen. It said it's got to give a distinct sound. Now, listen to what it said. Except they give a distinction in the sounds. How shall it be known what is piped or harp? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? If you're going to wake him up, if you're going to sound an alarm, if you're going to wake up in my holy mountain, he said that it's got to be a certain sound, a distinguishing sound. The reason why Saul of Tarsus, whenever he heard the voice, what did he say? You know, it's not being sacrilegious to try to understand what you believe. It's not being sacrilegious of saying, wait a minute, tell me, where did you come to an understanding and a belief in God? Through his word. Glory to God. I said through his word. Joshua 24 and 15. Joshua's calling them all together and he's having a real problem because the ones that Moses had led out of the bondage were now in the wilderness. Moses is dead. Joshua's got the obligation of leading them from the wilderness into the promised land and they've got all kinds of noises going on. Huh? It's got to be a trumpet of a certain sound. How can I know? Well, the best way I know to do is learn how to read your Bible. Not books about the Bible, but the Bible. I've read I don't know how many books about the Bible, commentaries and all kind of books, uh, 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 analytical books are talking about it and, uh, and all this and, uh, and, and did you know something this God that created the heavens and earth is returning to this earth again how do you know because the Bible told me so how do you know that the Bible is true because I accept it as true I've got all kind of evidences to me that prove that the Bible is true. How do you know that there is a God? Because I accept the fact that there is a God. I'm not going to be ignorant enough to sit out here and say, but uh, I can't see it, so I don't believe it. Start peddling, poke out my iPhone, but it's in my briefcase. I, uh, the Sunday morning I was sitting here and a woman started talking to me in my pocket. You know, but, uh, I, I don't understand a lot of things I accept today as reality. Amen? Do I understand God? Yes, I understand God. You know how I understand God? Listen to what the, the Bible said here. Joshua said that to the children of Israel, choose you this day who you're going to serve. Make up your mind who you're going to serve. John 3, 19, men love darkness rather than light. Well, don't tell me about it because if I don't know about it, I won't feel bad about it. Hallelujah. You know, uh, what, what are you talking about? Just because somebody set up some I, one, two, three, four, five, these are the things. And when I make a statement to, that, that America is not founded on the Hebrew Christian doctrine, people just shudder. We're not founded on the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Jesus came and fulfilled the Ten Commandments. We are founded on the two principles of the commandments, loving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And the second is same as the first. Why don't we hear that? Instead of Moses' law on Mount Sinai, like I said last Sunday morning, they found a man out picking up sticks. They said, well, we got to stone him. Can you imagine a country with no mercy and no grace? Can you imagine a people that's going to put somebody to death for picking up sticks? That was the law. 
They took and found a woman taken in adultery, the very act of adultery, and said, Our law says stone her. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn thee. Oh, just think about it. The love of God, a relationship with God, and a relationship with your fellow person like you want to have a relationship with yourself. You gotta have self-respect before you can have respect for other people. When you lie, cheat, steal, uh, and you have violated someone else's property or someone else's rights, uh, that means you have no respect whatsoever for yourself. Yes. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now listen to what that the Bible is saying is sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Make a a splitting noise. You've heard enough noise this morning to make a splitting noise. Wake them up. I, I've got uh, some, uh, men love darkness. Yes. Luke eleven thirty three. You're going to light a candle and put it under a bushel. Glory to God. The word of God means what it said. It says what it means. Are, are, are we going to come to an understanding? And because somebody... And I had this asked for me this morning and also yesterday morning. I don't know how the news gets out. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, they said, uh, what, what, uh, you don't even believe in the Trinity. And I said, what do you mean I don't believe in the Trinity? Trinity is a word that was concocted, uh, uh, brought about, coined in 138 by St. Augustine, uh, I mean uh, uh, St. Theophilus, uh, to try to explain how that one God can be manifested as Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Uh, and ignorant people over the years have interpreted it as three separate gods, three separate persons, three separate in, uh, essence. Uh, if they go back to the source and find out that uh, St. Theophilus uh, of the Roman Catholic Church, it was established in the fourth century, uh, that St. Theophilus brought a coin to term trying to explain uh, how that God, a uh, one God, monotheistic God, could be Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Uh, and Isaiah 9 and 6 had already explained it. Amen. Amen. You're going to light a candle and put down their bushel? You think I'm going to cow down uh, because somebody's in my mind, Lord, we got 500 people this morning. I would too if I'd given away cups and saucers and bulldogs and fire trucks uh, like we used to do, fill this place up because we gave away fire trucks. Didn't have sense enough to realize people were coming to hear the word of God. They were coming to get something uh, tangible, something they could hold in their grubby little hand. Do we know that life is more than meat and food and remnant? Do we know that existence is more than houses and land and Cadillacs and wings and fusions? Do we know that? The Bible said we do. Are we going to take and light that candle and, and put a bushel over it? Men love darkness rather than light. God spoke to the world. How did God speak to the world? By his word. Amen. And that's the only way that God has spoken to the world. The only way God ever will speak to the world. And uh, in the word was with God. And the word was God. Yeah. Oh, no, we can't be sure about that. Well, you might not be, but I made up my mind. Choose you this day who you're going to serve. The word of God spoke to my heart uh, and declared unto me, uh, if I would accept that word, I have got an anchor for my soul uh, and all of the torment and all of the turmoil, uh, everything that's going on in this country and everything that's going on worldwide, uh, my little boat gets to reeling and rocking uh, and thank God there's an anchor that is sure, that is steadfast. There's a rock uh, that I'm standing on. Uh, there is an anchor that Hold me sure and steadfast. Hallelujah. Why? Because I made up my mind. I accepted the fact that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him need not perish but have everlasting life. That's the word of God speaking to me. The word of God is in me. Amen. I am filled with the Holy Ghost. I am filled with the Spirit of God. Christ is in me. The hope of glory. You say, how do you know? Because I have allowed the word of God to be rooted and grounded and planted and thank God it's now taking root and it's growing up and it's coming forth as a rushing fountain of water.